Glenn Kaiser has been the vice president and general manager of Skywalker Sound. While in that position, Skywalker Sound worked on Avatar, The Incredibles and Million Dollar Baby, among others, of course. Currently, he is the director of the Dolby Institute. He also does a podcast called Conversations with Sound Artists, which you should definitely check out. This episode features a small chat. So this is Unset and you are welcome to Sound Files. <laughs> I'm Glenn Kaiser. I'm the director of the Dolby Institute. And the Dolby Institute is a program that we started at Dolby Laboratories a few years ago uh, to provide education and inspiration for next generation uh, writers and directors and content creators about why image and sound are important for storytelling. We had never really reached out to writers and directors uh, to kind of give them education and inspiration on why sound is important for storytelling. So the approach is really very simple, which is to expose them to some of the best examples of storytelling through sound in the world through showing them clips from films, uh, explaining to them how other artists use this technology to help them tell their stories. So I go around to film festivals and talent development labs all over the world and show scenes from movies and talk about the importance of sound. A lot of the clips that I show are from low budget independent films. And I'm glad that you mentioned documentaries because I think that not a lot of people think of really good sound design uh, in documentary film, but it absolutely has a role. Um, you know, any time that you want to give an audience the experience of a place and put them in a situation that the characters are inhabiting in the story, that's where sound can come in. I think the, the, the most important recommendation I can give is think about sound from the beginning of the process. So as you're writing the script, um, study films, listen to them, understand how artists that you admire are using sound to help, their, help tell their story. And think about that, think about including that in the script writing stage. Um, and if you can, certainly, most people tend to leave the sound work until the very, very end and they don't hire their sound artists until they're well into post-production. But it doesn't necessarily cost any more money, but if you, can, if you can hire your sound artist even before you go shoot the film and read the script with them and have conversations with them, they can share ideas about how you might be able to enable them to set up interesting sound moments in their film. So my, my biggest piece of advice is just think about it early and often from the beginning of the process. Engage those sound artists even before you go shoot your movie and just collaborate, make them part of your core creative team. Even you know, in a documentary, I think you're absolutely right because you don't know what the story is going to be until you go into the editing room. But you can certainly talk with your sound person and they can come along. Uh, if they have some time, they can come along when you're shooting and be with you in the environment and they can gather their own sounds and just be started thinking about how to build this, the sound of this world that you want to work on together. We really want to elevate the art. We really want people to be thinking about sound creatively and to, and to be uh, you know, doing great work. Now, of course, we do believe that ultimately, if these artists are doing the best possible work they can, they'll, be, they'll end up using Dolby technology. But really, uh, our point is just to uh, elevate the conversation around the craft and to get people thinking more critically about sound. Well, we're very, very excited about Dolby Atmos, which is our object-based sound technology. So it's not channel-based, it's not 5.1 or 7.1, but it allows the filmmaker, the storyteller, to think about sound as an individual object that can be moved around the 3D space of the, of the cinema. Uh, Dolby Atmos uses full frequency surrounds and even uh, overhead speakers in the ceiling and to give the, the director, the storyteller, that really a great control over placement of sound and fidelity of sound and it provides a really rich immersive experience and and I, I'm thrilled because we've had Dolby Atmos now in the, in the market for several years. It's been very warmly embraced by the creative community. We're even starting to see documentary films made uh, with Dolby Atmos now. Again, uh, you know, as I said before, any time that as a storyteller you want to take the audience to a place and give them a specific experience, then Dolby Atmos is a great tool for that. YouTube, yes, we hope so. We hope so. Uh, 
we've, we're, we've been talking with YouTube about Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. So there's some specific engineering challenges uh, with that, but we're hopeful that uh, we can solve those and, and be streaming and, and Vision and Atmos soon. sounds as raw as the cover looks. Really raw. It's almost astonishing to read the credits. Stephen Stills played bass and guitar on Carrie. James Taylor played guitar on three songs. And there's even a pedal steel to be heard. What? I don't remember hearing any additional instruments. The real acid of blue, however, are the songs, obviously. And man, what songs are they? This flight tonight was made famous by Nazareth. Blue resembles true beauty, topped off only by river, which to me presents one of the most intense contradictory images ever forged into song. I wish I had a river, she sings, and I imagine floating down the river in a boat with a gentle breeze. But in the same phrase she changes the image to the complete opposite. I could skate away on, turning the river into an icy path to escape from Christmas. Insane. Joni Mitchell is a true master of song and Blue is one of her masterpieces.